Hey guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com, and in this week's ukulele lesson, Stephen's going to be teaching you a beautiful classical piece, which is actually part of our brand new course, which is called Classical Technique and Style. Now this course sets out to teach you the two main picking techniques that classical ukulele players use. Let's take a look at what they are. The first picking technique is apayando. This is also known as the rest stroke. This technique involves your picking finger pushing through the string that you're playing and coming to rest on the adjacent string. Now, this technique does have its limitations because as you come to rest on the adjacent string, it's going to mute it. So this technique is mainly used for playing single note melody lines. The second technique is known as tirando, which is also called the free stroke. This one involves the finger picking the string and then moving into the space underneath the hand after each note. So you're not resting on an adjacent string, which means that every note has the ability to ring out and sustain. However, this technique makes it more difficult to produce the loud, full sounding tone and characteristic of the apayando technique. So this song is finger picked using tirando technique, which as we have just learned, is the go-to technique if we want our strings, aka our notes, to ring out and sustain. Now, if you'd like to dive deeper into how to do tirando or apayando technique, I'd highly encourage you to jump into our course which you can do so by clicking this link or the link in the description box below. Now, this course, it's going to teach you the mechanics behind performing each of these picking techniques, and it's gonna give you a ton of exercises that you can practice them with. So those exercises really help to get them ingrained into your playing skills. Now this song goes a step further because it teaches you how to apply stylistic approaches to your playing. In other words, it teaches you how to play with more dynamics, how to play with rubato, how to add accents to your playing, as well as how to change the location of your picking hand to produce different tones on the ukulele. Our course teaches all of these stylistic approaches and you can sample the lesson on dynamics 100% for free when you sign up for basic membership, which is free. So let's talk a little bit about this song. So in this video, Stephen's gonna be teaching you how to play the entire arrangement, but if you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, that's gonna be available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for the song. Now also on that page will be the interactive on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, you can watch the tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you want, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. Now before I hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this tune, there's a couple things that I want to mention real quick. This lesson is part of the course, so he's going to be teaching it with the assumption that you've gone through the course and you've made it up to this lesson in the course. So he may reference some things that were taught previously in the course, and he's also going to be teaching you how to play it with the assumption that you are familiar with the picking technique and you know how to apply the stylistic approaches, so the rubato, the dynamics, the accents, and so forth. Now, the second thing I want to mention is is that this song is best played with a low G ukulele. So you get the best sound using a low G ukulele. So without further ado, I'll hand it off to Steven to teach you how to play this, and then I'll catch you at the end of the video. In this unit, we're gonna apply what we've learned about dynamics and rubato to this really nice little country dance tune by Ferdinando Carulli. It's a relatively simple piece to learn and play, but that's gonna allow us to really focus on shaping our sound and experimenting with these performance techniques. It's also gonna take our right hand technique a little bit further by playing double stops in the Pima style rather than just single notes as we've been doing so far in this course. The other thing to note in terms of the right hand is that we're playing this entire piece 
bass using girando or free stroke, just so the notes can ring and sustain for their full duration. So this piece is in 2-4 time, so we just have two quarter notes to the bar, and we're mostly just playing this continuous eighth note rhythm throughout. But because we're in 2-4 time, just remember to place that slight emphasis on beat one of each measure. So the piece comprises of three separate eight bar sections, We've got an A section, a B section, and a C section. Each section is played through twice before finishing off with one more playthrough of that A section. So that's gonna give us plenty of scope for really having some fun with rubato and dynamics. So let's get into it. I think we'll look at four measures at a time before playing them through slowly together. Once we've looked at each eight bar section, we'll go back and then look at how to apply rubato and dynamics to that section before moving on to the next section. So make sure you've got your low G ukulele and let's get into that A melody. So the first four measures of this A section should sound like this. Okay, so as I mentioned in the intro, we're just playing all eighth notes here. So the rhythm for each measure is just one and two and, and we have this kind of repeating picking pattern for the first two measures where we play a double stop on the beat and then a bass note on the and after the beat. So for the first measure, that double stop is just the E string open and the C string open. So have your two fingers, index and middle fingers together. And the only thing to consider here is that when you play that double stop, we want both of those notes to sound out together kind of at the same time as one. So try and avoid any separation between them. When we hit those two notes together, they should sound as one. So in terms of the technique for that, obviously we're playing double stops now, just kind of have your two fingertips together. So the index and middle finger have the two fingertips touching and just imagine a kind of elastic band or piece of tape around the end of your fingers there, just holding those together. They stay touching and they kind of just move as one. Okay, so just practice that kind of technique so that when we get that double stop hit, We just get that single sound. Okay, so that's beat one, that uh, double stop of the two open strings, and then we hit the G string open with the thumb on the end after beat one. And then we just do that again to complete that measure. And then into measure two, the right hand does the same thing again, double stop bass, double stop bass, but this time over a G7 chord. So the first finger takes the E string at the first, second finger will take the C string at the second, and then we just do the same thing as what we did in measure one. So hit that double stop, E and C strings, then bass, double stop again, then bass. So there's two measures together. Nice. And then into measure three, we just go back to the C chord. So we'll take those two things off, all open strings, and then just hit that double stop of E and C open just like measure one, then followed by the open G, just like measure one. But at this point now on beat two of measure three, we're gonna have this little run of all single note picks. So the first one of those is the E string at the first fret. So we'll use the first finger to hold that. But if you look ahead in the tab there, you can see we've got two successive notes on this E string. So we'll use our right hand alternation here just to avoid repeating fingers. So instead of hitting this E string at the first with the middle finger, which we would do if we were just applying our kind of standard Pima system, we'll actually use the index finger first. So when we hit the open E at the end of this measure, finger comes off, we'll use the middle finger for that. So two E string hits, index first, then alternate to the middle. Okay, and then when we go into measure four, we're gonna to go to this G5 chord, we're gonna hit the C string at the second, second finger will take that, but we can just go back to our standard Pima system here, so the index finger will pick that C string, then thumb takes the G open, but we'll leave the second finger on as we're doing this, and then on beat two, we'll put the third finger onto the E string at the third fret, but again, just leave that second finger on, that can carry on ringing as we pick that note with the middle finger. That's beat two. Then the last note of this measure and this phrase, the open G string, 
just to finish off. So those two measures, measures three and four, Okay, and then all four measures together. Brilliant. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One and two and. On to the next four measures, measures five through to eight. This starts off the same as the first four measures we've looked at. So measures five and six are just the same as measures one and two. So nothing new to learn there. When we go into measure seven, this starts off the same as measure three. So we have that C chord on beat one, followed by the open G on the end after beat one. And then we're going to come to this E string at the first fret, just like we did in measure three. But because we haven't got two successive notes on the E string this time, we'll just pick that with the middle finger as we normally would when using the Pima system. So B2, E string of the first, middle finger of the right hand. And then leave that on as we put the second finger onto the C string at the second fret to complete this G7 chord. Pick that with the index finger. And then we're going to come to the C chord in measure eight, just a single note here, uh, just a half note which rings for the rest of this measure. And that's going to be the C string open. But because we've just used the index finger on that C string, we're hitting the C string again now in measure eight. So we'll alternate to the middle finger, take everything off on the left hand, and then pick that C string open with the middle finger there. So just that last kind of three set of single note picks there on this section we'd have middle finger, index finger, middle finger. Okay, so that second phrase there, measures five through to eight, should sound like this. Brilliant. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One and two. And so now that we know how to play that A melody section, let's have a look at how we could apply rubato and dynamics to that section just to kind of elevate it a little bit when we perform this piece. So in terms of rubato, I would probably use the example that I gave you in the rubato lesson for each phrase here. So this is an eight bar section, so we can think of this as being split into two phrases. So each four bar section is one phrase. So if we think about the first phrase of this piece, Measures one to four there. As I said, I would probably apply that kind of example that I gave you in the rubato lesson. So ease into that measure one, maybe just lagging behind the beat ever so slightly, but then catch up and keep time into measures two and three. And then as you go through measure four, maybe just slow things down ever so slightly, lag behind the beat again, just to kind of mark the end of that phrase. So something like this. And when we go into the next four measures, uh, measures five to eight, it's very, very similar. So I'll probably apply the same kind of rubato approach to that section as well. In terms of dynamics, we're playing mezzo forte throughout this section, um, but I maybe just do a slight decrescendo at the end of measure eight. So at the end of the whole A section, maybe just drop the volume down as we're slowing things down as well. And then just for a bit of added variation, we could think about picking in different areas on the ukulele. So the first four measures, we could play kind of just around the sound hole, but then we, when we play measures five to eight, you could try just moving your pick in hand, maybe down towards the bridge and just give that second phrase just a slightly different sound. So we'll play the whole section, showing the kind of two variations we could have.
So onto the B section now, measures 9 to 12 should sound like this. Okay, so similar kind of sound to the A section, similar kind of idea, alternate between double stops and bass notes to begin with. The difference here though is we're moving to the A and the E string for that double stop, so we're using the middle and ring finger this time to play those double stops. But same kind of idea, you know, have the fingertips together there of those two fingers, imagine that elastic band around the fingertips holding them together so they just move as one, so that when we hit that double stop, we just get that kind of single sound, both notes sounding together. So in terms of the chord we're playing, we're playing a G7 or part of the G7, so we'll use the A string at the second fret and with the second finger, and then the E string at the first fret with the first finger. And then beat one of this measure nine is just that double stop with the middle and ring finger, followed by the open G in the bass. Then we just do that again to complete that measure. And then when we go into measure 10, we're gonna turn this into a C chord, so the third finger will come up and take that A string at the third. These two fingers will come off as we do that, and then hit that double stop, same two strings, A string and E string, on beat one, and then that open G on the end after beat one. And then for beat two now, we're gonna to come to the A and the E string open, so, switch to the index and middle fingers for this double stop, E and C on beat two. And then again, just finish with that G string open on the end after beat two. So those first two measures, as I say, just make sure those double stops are sounding as one. And then into measure 11, we're coming back to the G7 chord, but we're staying on the E and C strings here. So the first finger will take the E string at the first, second finger will take the C string at the second, and then we hit that double stop, E string and C string, with the index and middle fingers on B1, then the open G on the end after B1, and then like the A section, we move to this run of single note picks to finish off this phrase into the end of measure 12. So beat two of measure 11, we have the A string open, so we can just pick that with the ring finger. And then the last note here of measure 11 is the E string at the third fret. We'll use a third finger to hold that, but we'll use the index finger to pick it because the first note of measure 12 is that E string again. So just right hand alternation again, just to alternate the picking fingers. So the last note here on measure 11, this E string at the third fret, third fingers on it, pick with the index. And then into measure 12, take all these fingers off as we then pick that E string again, but open this time with the middle finger of the right hand. And then we go to the open G string, with the thumb, then the open C string with the index, and then back to that open G string with the thumb. So just those two measures there, measures 11 and 12. So I try that again. Brill. And then with measures nine and 10, Let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One and two and. Then on to the second half of the B section, measures 13 through to 16. These are pretty much the same as the previous four measures. In fact, the first three measures of this bit, measures 13, 14, and 15, are identical to measures 9, 10, 11. So we just play. And then measure 16, we just play this C chord, this double stop of E and C strings open. So take everything off and then just pick those two strings together using the index and middle finger on beat one of measure 16 and then let that ring out 
for the rest of that measure. So those four measures through together for that second half of the B section. Brill. One and two and. So in terms of rubato for that B section, I would probably apply a similar approach to what we did in the A section. So kind of easing into the phrase, just lagging behind the beat slightly, and then catching up and keeping time and then slowing things down slightly as we get to the end of that phrase before moving into the next one. I think that'll work quite well for the B section as well. So in terms of dynamics though, we're gonna do something a bit different here. The first four bars of this section, so bars nine to 12, we're gonna play those mezzo forte, same as the A section, so moderately loud. But then when we move into bar 13 through to 16, we're then gonna to switch to playing piano, so very softly, well not very softly, but just softly. And that's gonna give quite a big kind of dynamic difference there between those two phrases. Okay, and you could even think about when you play those two phrases, a bit like in the A section, play one of them in one area of the ukulele, and then for the next phrase, just move your hand you know, towards the neck or towards the bridge, just with that kind of reduction in volume, also changing the position of the picking hand, it's just gonna add you know, a big separation between those two phrases, just make them sound, well, more dynamic. On to the C section now, measure 17 through to 20 should sound like this. So quite a difference in the sound here, we've changed quite dramatically, we're playing this A minor chord now and we're starting just with these single note picks um, rather than the kind of alternating double stop bass notes, a big difference in sound, some quite clever little tricks in this section just to really differentiate it and add something quite different to the piece here. So we're starting on this C um, section on this A minor chord with the second finger on the G string of the second fret and the rest of the strings just open. In terms of picking this, we'll just use our standard Pima system here. So thumb plays the G string, index on the C open, middle on the E open, and then ring finger on the A open. And that's measure 17, just working up that chord, one and two and. And then into measure 18, we do that same thing again, starting on the G string. Okay, and then when we move into measure 19, we go into this E chord. So what we're gonna do is drop the G string down to the first fret, and the first finger will take that. Second finger comes off. And then this A string at the second fret, we'll use the third finger for that. And then we'll play the bass note on beat one. And then the double stop on the and after beat one. Double stop of A and E string. So middle and ring finger picking those. So you can see that's like the opposite to what we did on the A and B sections. Those sections started with a double stop and then followed with the bass note. This time we're starting on the bass note and then following with a double stop. Just another little clever trick, just to kind of change things up a little bit and differentiate this section from those other two sections. So the second half of measure 19 is just that same thing again. Bass note, followed by double stop. And then that same pattern, that same picking pattern for the next measure, measure 20, but moving it up to the A minor chord. So these two frets that we're holding are just gonna come up one fret, but rather than sliding those fingers up and getting that kind of squeak on the G string, we'll use the spare fingers here. The second finger will go onto the G string at the second, and the pinky will take the C string at the third. These two fingers come off, and then we're holding this A minor chord. Same thing again, bass note first on beat one, followed by the double stop, A and E strings, on the end after beat one. Then we hit that G string again on beat two, and then on the last double stop here of this measure 20, we're just gonna open up that A string and play the A string open with the E string open, so middle and ring fingers, and 
and play that on the end after beat two. So for that measure 20, when we've played that first double stop on the and after beat one, we'll keep the pinky on as we play beat two so that A string C note there can carry on ringing. And then just as you're ready to play that next double stop of A and E string open, just take that pinky off just as you pick it, just before you pick it, so it can ring for as long as possible. So those four measures once again. Brilliant. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One and two and. to the second half of the C section now, measures 21 through to 24, they should sound like this. Okay, so measure 21, we want to hold this C string at the second fret. We will have been holding the G string at the second fret with the second finger at the end of the previous measure, measure 20, but we don't want that A note, that G string second fret ringing over this measure 21. So what I would do as you put the third finger onto the C string at the second fret for this first note of measure 21, just lift the pressure off that second finger from the G string but you could try and just have the control to lift it, but keep the fingertip touching that G string. For two reasons, we're gonna come back to it shortly, but also if we lift it off completely, sometimes we can get that open G note ringing, and that's gonna clash with this E7 chord of this measure 21, we don't want that. So try and just lift the pressure off it, but leave the fingertip touching it, so it mutes it, so we don't get the open G sound. So the third finger has taken that C string at the second fret. Pick that with the index finger on beat one here of measure 21. Then we'll play the open E with the middle finger, back to that C string, then back to the E string. And then we're gonna go to the C string open for the start of measure 22. So we'll just take um, that third finger off, play the open C, then the open E. Now we're coming back to this G string at the second fret. So our second finger that we've kind of left there, just touching that G string, can now just put the pressure back on. And then we'll pick that with the thumb on B2. And at the end of this measure 22, we just play that E string open once again. So that measure 21 and 22. Then into measure 23, we're gonna come back to this E chord. So the first finger will take the G string at the first fret, second finger comes off. And then the third finger will take that A string at the second fret. We play the bass note with the thumb on beat one. And then the double stop for A string and E string with the middle and ring finger on the end after beat one. Then just do that again for the rest of this measure 23. And then measure 24, we just hit this A minor chord of G string second. So second finger will go back on and take that. First finger comes off. Third finger comes off as well to open up that A string. And then we just hit the G string and the A string together, the thumb and the ring finger. Both notes together on beat one. And then that just rings out for the rest of that measure. So just those two measures, measures 23 and 24. with measure 21 and 22. Brilliant. So let's have a go at playing those four measures through together now. One and two and
So this is a really nice piece by Ferdinando Carulli. I really enjoy playing it. This A section and B section are great, but when we hit this C section, I think it just makes this piece. I think it just elevates it and turns it into something really special. I love this C section. We move to this minor chord, and then in terms of dynamics, we're playing this forte now. So this whole section, we play loud, which just increases that tension and that drama. So in terms of rubato, I probably wouldn't apply the same approach that we did for the A section and B section. Because we've got this kind of tension and drama going on, we're playing loud, I think that kind of romantic approach to rubato that we apply to the A and B section probably wouldn't work as well for this section, I think, personally. So for the first four bars, of the C section, I probably wouldn't apply any rubato at all. Probably play this with quite a kind of metronomic rhythm at this louder volume, just to kind of go with that minor chord, that tension, that drama that we have in this C section. When we get to measure 21 though, we just drop the volume down to mezzo piano, just briefly, and then we crescendo back to playing forte um, through measures 21 and 22. So when we drop the volume slightly there at the start of measure 21, I'll maybe just apply a bit of rubato here, perhaps just lag behind the beat slightly as we drop the volume, but then as we crescendo back up to play in forte, just bring the tempo back up to time as well, and then play the rest of that section pretty much with that metronomic rhythm. So maybe just a little bit of rubato there, kind of measure 21 into 22. So these are just ideas to get you started in terms of rubato and dynamics. You don't have to follow these. You can if you want to, of course, but I would encourage you to use this piece to really have fun and experiment with the concepts learned in this module. And that is in fact the end of module three. So when you're ready, come and join me over in module four, where we'll be applying literally everything we've learned in this course so far to a beautiful little piece by Francisco Tarrega. All right, guys, so this week's ukulele lesson was a ton of fun. It's a beautiful piece of music, and it's really a master class in learning how to apply stylistic approaches to our playing, a.k.a. rubato, accents, dynamics, changing the location of our picking hand to get different tones. There's just so much uh, compiled into this one short piece of music. It's really, really cool. And again, this song comes from our brand new course, which is called classical technique and style. So I'd highly encourage you to check out the course if you have not yet. It really sets out to teach you how to perform classical music with more authenticity. So I will link the course in the description box below. And last but not least, I do want to give you a friendly reminder for this song that if you wanted to get the tabs to print off and keep for your records, that was available at this link right here, or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for the name of the tune. And don't forget too, on that page was the really cool interactive on-screen tab viewer. So you can literally hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time, highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down, all that fun jazz. So guys, I hope you check out the course and we'll catch you in the next lesson. Take care. <laughs>